I found this laptop in the lobby of my apartment building in an area where residents leave things that other residents can make use of. Kind of a one-way swap meet. When I saw the Apple logo, I was a little skeptical since it did look like someone painted the logo on the lid. I decided to grab it so you can see what I do with this. When I first looked over this laptop, I figured this must be a real Apple laptop, especially since it says MacBook on the inside. I'm so used to seeing modern MacBooks, I didn't realize Apple made something that looked like this. After some time looking over the laptop, I realized why this laptop looked so terrible. It had a translucent case covering the actual laptop. Once I removed the case, it was a slightly better look, but definitely something from a bygone era of Apple's. I'm kinda curious what year this MacBook is. From some early research I already did, it looks to be either a 2006 or 2007 MacBook, which would either be the Core Duo or the Core 2 Duo. I'll probably find out more once I can boot it up. But the other thing is, there's no charger and the battery is dead. I wonder if the Apple Store will be willing to charge it up for me. I don't want to buy a charger for this MacBook unless I know it still runs at a reasonable performance level. If it does, with this being such an antiquated model, I'm thinking of converting it into a Chromebook using Neverware's Cloud Ready. Another computer I've converted into a Cloud Ready Chromebook is this 2009 iMac model A1225. This may look like a waste of resources, but it is slow even at streaming 720p and the single purpose I wanted to use it for, VPN, would not work because the version of macOS was not current enough and couldn't be upgraded any further. Now with Cloud Ready installed, the Chrome OS version of that same VPN software works great because all the software is current. I also like VPNing from the iMac because the screen size is comfortable for all day work and the resolution matches what I have at my work desk. I've also converted a 2010 Toshiba into a Chromebook that my son uses daily for school. I hope I can do the same with this old MacBook, but first I need to see if I can get the battery charged up. A cheap charging alternative I decided on was to only get a USB-A to MagSafe 1 adapter cable and use it with an auto switching power adapter that came with my 2018 MacBook Pro for which you might have seen one of my recent repair videos for. While I wait for the cable to come in, I'll start disassembling the MacBook to take a look inside and do some cleanup. I'm going to tear down this MacBook to see what's inside, which without powering it on, will give me a good idea of what might need to be upgraded to give this computer the best possible extension on its useful life. If I'm lucky, things like RAM and storage might already be up to speed and I won't have to do anything except install Cloud Ready. It's also interesting to see how easy MacBooks were to tear down and swap parts in and out of. Yet another bygone era of Apple's. I don't think I'll be able to swap out the CPU so I won't be tearing things down for that reason and I'm glad the RAM and storage were easily accessible just after removing the battery. I am curious to see what's inside, so I will take this teardown as far as is needed to take a look at the motherboard and also to clean out any dust that could be blocking the cooling ventilation. That should get this MacBook into as good a working condition as possible before I turn it into a cloud-ready Chromebook. Panning around the motherboard, there's a good amount of dust and hair, but it doesn't look like 14 years worth of dust so this MacBook must have been opened up previously for at least cleaning. I looked up the original specs on this particular MacBook and the 1GB of RAM and 120GB hard drive seem to be original. I'll brush and vacuum the motherboard and especially the fan where there's a good amount of dust caked up on the fan blades. The dust and hair doesn't seem to be badly stuck on anywhere so cleanup is pretty easy. There's also some dust built up under the keyboard, so I vacuumed that up. Since the dust seemed to be stuck to the bottom of the keyboard, I ended up using alcohol to finish up cleaning the keyboard by scrubbing it with a toothbrush. I also went back to the motherboard with the alcohol and scrubbed that down as well. The RAM and hard drive are in pretty clean condition, so I'll give them a quick scrubbing with alcohol to clean off the contacts before mounting them back in the MacBook. 
I'd like to see how this computer boots up once I get the battery charged up, but if I'm going to use this computer with cloud ready, I'm sure I'll be upgrading the RAM to its 4GB max. I wanted to show you what I use to organize screws when dismantling computers. Some computer teardowns are simple enough where you can basically leave everything in one big pile. Then there are times like this teardown when screws from the same side of the computer are of multiple lengths. That's why looking into these containers, you can see some containers with only one screw in them. That's to separate and label the screw or screws with which hole they go into. Some kind of container system really helps and I'd recommend it if you're getting into computer teardowns. Usually reassembly is a lot easier than disassembly as long as you've kept things organized. It's mostly why disassembly takes so long is because you're trying to think of the best way to organize items while you're doing the teardown, so it does slow down the process some. Another tool I've not used until this video is this screwdriver with the flex extension. It was needed for this teardown due to the odd angle needed to remove screws that were in the battery compartment. Using a normal screwdriver would possibly strip the head of the screw because of the angle the screwdriver would be held at and using a short screwdriver made it hard to twist since I could only use the tips of my fingers. The flex extension came with my screwdriver set and I never thought I'd need it but I'm glad I encountered this odd situation. I finally received the charging cable more than a month after I ordered it on eBay. It was coming from Shenzhen, China, so I expected it to take longer than usual. I'm hoping this MacBook will power up without charging the dead battery because I'm certain the battery is so old it won't hold the charge anyway and I'll have to run it off the charger until I can get a new battery. Running off the charger seems to work, but this MacBook doesn't boot into Mac OS. Not even an error message. Although I plan to eventually install Cloud Ready on this MacBook, I'm still curious to see if I can get Mac OS running and see if I would have been able to repair this computer to its original state. Booting with the original drive that came installed in this MacBook and holding down the option key to get the Apple Boot Manager only shows the mouse pointer but no boot drive selection. Booting with a replacement drive installed and again holding down the option key now shows the drive that was just installed. It wasn't bootable when I tested it earlier, but it is recognized by the computer. With that in mind, the original drive is probably dead. Well, I tried researching installing the version of Mac OS X that was needed for this laptop and decided against it because I would have had to buy it. So rather than testing an old version of Mac OS that might have been fun, I'm going to move forward with installing Cloud Ready. Going through the initial install process is already telling me I'm going to need more RAM. This time though, I'll try to avoid installing an SSD and see how just the RAM upgrade works with Cloud Ready. As a baseline, this is how long it takes to start Cloud Ready at 10x time lapse with only 1GB of RAM. And now, with 4GB of RAM, again recording a 10x time lapse, the booting process is quite a bit faster. I feel the speed of this laptop with 4GB of RAM, a Core 2 Duo, and a 256GB mechanical hard drive is at the borderline of the slowest performance I would want in a Chromebook. It feels a little laggy, but it's still usable. Under ideal conditions, I'd go with 8GB of RAM, at least an i3 CPU, and at least a 256GB SSD. If you've got kids who need a computer and you're on a budget, I feel a used computer converted into a Chromebook is a useful alternative. Leave your questions and comments in the comments section below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.